first of all, on behalf of every one of us here, we want to thank Elaine Gibbs. Elaine, come up here, please. inside uh, here tonight when you could be doing other things and I'm, hopefully you will do other things tonight. Go ahead and enjoy yourselves and spend time with your family, especially after what happened in Colorado. I'll tell you what, uh, one of the first things I did when I learned was to call my kids and tell them I love them and miss them and uh, hope they're well and give Neil an extra hug and kiss because it just shows how fleeting life can be sometimes and my thoughts and prayers and I know yours as well it goes out to those, uh, those families who are struck with a senseless tragedy and that's uh, very unfortunate that being said uh, you being here means more than I can say I'm uh, I'm blessed I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world aside from my marriage of 26 years uh, this is 2600 or 26 <laughs> yeah, 26 yeah 26 years to get up <laughs> and the birth of my kids uh, being your senator has been the greatest honor I've ever had in my life to think that somebody like me who is a regular guy who basically came from a broken family, probably like many of you, and had some challenges growing up, can actually represent you in the people's seat. I'll tell you what. We need the Kennedy seat with all due respect. It's not the Kennedy seat, it's not my seat, and it's not the Democrat seat. It still is the people's seat. Right. And what I, and what I mean by that is that uh, you sent me down there to do a job. 
You sent me down there not to be like the others. I vote 54% with my party. Every other member of our delegation votes 97% with their party. So for you Democrats here, when your friends say, you know, Scott Brown, he really needs to be more bipartisan, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> and for your Republican friends, you know, Scott Brown, he's too bipartisan. They don't know what they're talking about either because we need people like me right now. Right now, in this moment in time in our country's history, to work together. The only way we're going to get out of this mess, folks, that we're in, and we are in a mess, we are at the precipice, that financial cliff that Bernanke was talking about, we're getting very, very close to it. We can't kick the can, we can't move things down the road, we are at the wall right now. And my job as your senator is to try to find ways to solve these problems. Try to make sure that the money coming out of your pocketbooks and wallets is spent well. I don't think that anyone here will disagree that you want to do your fair share. And many of you have done way more than your fair share through your philanthropic efforts, through being job creators, through doing what you feel is right not only for this community, but the state and this country, whether it's through military service, volunteer service, or just creating jobs and businesses in this country. You've done your part. And before I ask you for one more penny, I want to make sure that there's a reestablishment of trust between you as taxpayers and the federal government. Because right now, the federal government is not a good steward of your money. And I'll give you an example. Senator Carper and I had a hearing, Delaware, a, a Democrat, Carp, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, been there for quite a, quite a long time. It's like an older brother. We had a hearing uh, on Medicaid about two weeks ago. And we had the hearing, and we found out that uh, we spent, you spent, collectively $101 million to collect 20. Now, I don't know if we're in Foxwoods or what, where you actually go down with 100, you walk back with 20, you say, I had a great day, man, it was great, it was a great day in Foxwoods. Well, it's like that in the federal, in the federal government. They say by spending 80 million of your tax dollars, wasting 80 million of your tax dollars, that's a good deal. But when we had the hearing, we asked them, well, what are you talking about? They said, we fired all those people. Really, it only took you five years. Do you know how much we pay people that are dead? How much? Yeah, it's, it's, it's over a billion dollars over a 10-year period, so it's a substantial amount. And that's just through overpayments and improper payments and just not paying attention. My job as your senator is to make sure they do it better. We need people down there who will read the bills. I read the bills, folks. Okay? I, I'm probably one of the only people that does it. And, yeah. our state, our country, our debt, and our debts, and I vote. I don't care who's, uh, who's putting it forward, and I'll give you an example. Uh, there, there is gridlock down there. The, the country and the, the people in it who are running it, they're having trouble communicating. And notwithstanding all of those challenges, I've been blessed. Uh, we did the insider trading bill. I didn't know you could go down to Washington and actually do insider trading and not go to jail. Did you? Yeah. Honest to goodness. Well, now you will. Now you will. I found that there was a discrepancy. Uh, that the House Ethics and the Senate Ethics Committee put out two different versions of who needs to disclose. The Senate got it right. It's me, it's my wife, and my dependent kids. The House said, oh, it's just the filers, it's not the wife. And the... That's not what we intended. Very clear. So I wrote a letter. I did a CNN piece with Dana Bash. Wrote a letter to Boehner. Wrote a letter to Cantor. Wrote a letter to the President. Guess who called me this morning? We're pretty bad. Uh, Leader Cantor. Why didn't you just call me? We could have worked this out. We don't know. I said, you can still do it. And then when you do it, I'll be the first one to be on the TV commending you, commending you for doing such a wonderful job and addressing this problem right away. So sometimes you need to control, sometimes you need to be strong, sometimes you need to push, sometimes you need to pull, sometimes you need to say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And let me tell you something. If you remember my victory speech, I said I was going to make mistakes. And I have. And I will continue to make them. But you know what the difference is? When I make a mistake, I recognize it. I apologize for it, I explain what I thought I was doing or what I meant to do, and I uh, move on. When Professor Warren makes a mistake, i.e. Uh, claiming that she was a Native American, <laughs> you know, she could have very easily just said, you know what, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, it's something my family told me. I understand, I think we all would understand. But to now claim that she's a Native American and actually get um, benefits because of that, it's wrong. So, so that's the difference. When people say, well, you know, you said you met with kings and queens, Scott. 
You know what I should have said? I understand it's a political season now. I should have said I meet with representatives of kings and queens. Um, I need to be precise in my language because it is an election year and it's a gotcha situation. I get that. But the, the whole point is when I make a mistake, I admit it and I learn from it and I move forward. Not unlike anybody in this room. Uh, we have some very real challenges and you're going to have a very real choice. And as I said inside, how can you help? Uh, you can take some bumper stickers. You can sign up on scottbrown.com. Uh, let me know where you are, what you're doing, so we can send you an absentee ballot, maybe. If you're going down to Florida, your kids are going to school, you can uh, volunteer, go door to door, do phone calls from your home computer. You have that program, so you can do it in the comfort of your own home. Uh, I can't do this alone. I can't. It's too big. They have MoveOn.org, SEIU, all the unions, all the Hollywood elite. All the folks out there raising $8.6 million for her. And I raised 6.5. It's the most in the history of, the, of Congress. She raised 8.6. She's going to be every penny too. <laughs> so, um, I just want to say thank you. I'm going to spend some time and say hello to folks. I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm the featured racer. One of the featured racers tomorrow at the Nantucket Triathlon at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> It'll be my sixth triathlon in a row. Uh, and every weekend I've been doing it for a row. Wow. Uh, I can barely walk in the morning, believe me. And my wife says I'm nuts. But, uh, so I'm, I have to catch a plane in a little while. But I want to come around and say hi to everybody. And uh, I want to just say thank you. I can't do this alone. And I'm asking for your help. Three and a half months, folks. That's it. Give me 10 hours a week. Everybody in this room, I'll win by a landslide. So God bless. Uh, go home and give your family a